Hello, everybody, and welcome to Teacher Tales on Tuesday. Before we introduce ourselves tonight, I want to name this place and acknowledge our position of privilege on the traditional lands of the Beatuk and the present day lands of the Mi'kmaq, the Innu and the Inuit. A land acknowledgement recognizes the longer history reaching beyond colonization and the history of European colonies. And it upholds the significance of all indigenous peoples who live and continue to live in this place. In the days and weeks and months and years again ahead, we have many opportunities to move forward in reflection, action and reconciliation with indigenous communities as we seek ways to heal with hearts and minds together. So welcome to Tuesday Tales on Tuesday. My name is Jan Bewley and I am so thrilled to offer classes in literacy and drama education at Memorial University's Faculty of Education. I'm delighted to have you joining me tonight as we reflect on the legacy of 100 years of teacher education in Newfoundland and Labrador, where we have been, where we are presently, and where we hope to grow. Tonight, I have some very special questions for the three connected guests who are here tonight. We have Grandma Audrey Jenkins. So excited to have Audrey here. Can you wave at everybody, Audrey? There's Audrey. You're going to meet Audrey. We have her daughter, Michelle Shepard. Wave to everybody, Michelle. And that's Michelle with one L. And yes. Here in St. John's, but usually over on the West Coast, is a much-loved student, Miranda Shepard. So, Miranda, you can wave at everybody. Yeah. And uh, we're going to leap in here. I've got some questions for everybody. Um, this is so exciting, excited, uh, exciting to have an intergenerational evening here. And um, we've got some stories to share. So, I'm going to start with with Miranda. And Miranda, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what drew you to the teaching profession? Oh, it's something I've always wanted to do. The earliest I can remember saying I wanted to be a teacher is grade seven. Um, I've always been really good with kids. And my mom was a teacher for my childhood so that really was a big influence for me and she did her education degree at Memorial University here in St. John's as well. Uh, and and uh, did you ever have mom for a teacher Miranda? I did yeah she was she was in my class on occasion and it was always very entertaining for me. <laughs> did you ever call her mom by mistake? Always. I, I don't think I've ever called her Mrs. Shepard. It's always been mom. I love it. And Michelle, I'm going to turn over to you. What drew you to teaching in, in, uh, well, you don't, you don't even have to tell when you graduated, Michelle. We'll keep that a secret. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't mind. Uh, well, when I, uh, I've always liked school, I've always loved school, and I always loved French while I was doing school. So when I went to Memorial, it was assumed I was going to university. So when I went, I did a double major in French and English. And wow. when I finished my arts degree, I decided to do my education degree. But because I had my arts degree already in a double major, I was into the high school stream. So uh -huh. my degree technically is a high school degree. Okay. And, and um, Michelle, what year did you graduate from Memorial University's education program? 1990. Right on. Uh, 30 years when Miranda started was 30 years from when I graduated. Wow. Wow. And Audrey, over to you now. What, what, brought you into the teaching profession? What did you like about it? Huh. I got to think about that. To tell you the truth, I don't know. 
were like, uh. Was it was it the salary? <laughs> uh, not necessarily. We didn't get that much. <laughs> she graduated. She went to our first. Well, you graduated when you were seventeen because you finished your high school. Yeah. So when you were seventeen, she went out teaching that September. Wow. From doing nothing, graduating school to going into a school to teach. Wow. Wow. And because the first school. Middle arm, I think. Middle, Middle arm. arm. Middle arm elementary. Yeah. Well, wow. There was, no, there was. Yeah. Well, this is younger ones. There's only a few higher ones there. And and there, were, there was two of us. Actually. Wow. There was a man and me. And uh, he had the boys, the higher, higher ones. There's only a few people. There wasn't that many in the school anyway. But I took uh, care of the younger ones. And that was um, in 1953. And just so the audience do everything. Just so the audience knows, I think it's really neat to to disclose. This is the best kept secret on the screen that Grandma Jenkins is a youngster at 87 here tonight joining us, which is just so exciting, Audrey, to have you here. I, I can't tell you how thrilled all of our listeners are. I don't know how many people we have out listening, but I'm sure that there are teachers who are in awe and some listeners who are absolutely amazed that you're, you're joining us tonight and sharing some teacher stories. So thanks for being here. Um, I, I, I have a question. I have a, a question for you, Audrey, just to follow up on what you, you said there. When you, when you talked about only looking after the little, the little ones, did you have all the kindergarten grade one, two, three, four, five kids together? Or can you, would you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, yeah they were all together, all in the same room. And it was a one room schoolhouse. Yeah. 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 Can you tell us about that yeah. space? What did it look like? Oh, it was, well, they had a blackboard. That's about the size of it. There wasn't much else. And well, you, what were the, you what said were the, they did have their own desk. I mean, they had their desks. And, uh, and there was a wood stove. Oh yeah, in the room. Who lit? Who who had to light the wood stove? Oh, uh, I don't know. One of the bigger boys, I guess. Oh, and that's how the school was heated. Yeah. Was there a was there a place for the kids to hang up their coats at the back before they came in? Oh yes, yeah, there, yeah. And did they bring their own lunches? Yes. They, they stayed well, they, all day. They, 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 could, they could go home for lunch. Oh. And did you ring a bell yeah, to bring them in? Yeah. Oh, yes. I had the bell. <laughs> what, and what time, what time did you have to be there in the morning? Oh, I, I don't know. Around 9 o'clock, 8.30, I dare say I was there trying to get things straightened up. And so. can you can you talk a little bit, Audrey, about how you organized lessons for all those kids? Well, I never had anything to work with in my, my fingers and pencils. It all I I made out. I made every every test. I had to write it out myself and give it to the youngsters. Wow. And were many of them able to read and write? Oh, yeah. The, the, the main, they were good at it. The, the main lot could. There's only some of them that I used to have to, you know, really look after. Uh-huh. Most, the most of them could catch on. They were smart enough for that. Uh-huh. So, and when I I used to put stuff on the blackboard 
any any tests I'd have to put on the blackboard. I'd have to because I didn't have anything to to work with. Wow, Did were there any, any books? Book? Were, were there any books there? Yeah. Yeah, I think there was a few. Now this was a two-room school. There was a the other other higher the other grades was all over in the other place, but they were all in the same building, but they were separated. So I had the lower ones. And, and how uh, about the, how about the washroom? Did you have an outhouse? That's about the size of it. <laughs> Be pretty cold running to that in the middle of February. Ah, uh, didn't <laughs> you got to remember where we're living in Newfoundland? We're used to stuff like that, <laughs> so it was no big deal. Now, Audrey, do you remember? Do you remember getting your first paycheck? My no, I don't. Do you, you remember? First, I really don't. Do you remember how much you were paid when you first started? No, I can't remember for the life of me. I wonder what it was. I haven't got it. Well, not very much. That I know. It wasn't very much, but and, I was and, happy. And Audrey, did you walk to the school from where you lived? Yeah. Yeah. And I had to go uphill. And it was a big hill. And then huh. I had to come down for dinner. And then I had to go up again and come down again. <laughs> and and did you make did you do report cards and things for each of the children as well? Oh yes. I yeah. Yeah, I had to do that too. But, uh, first thing I had to I was teaching in two places. I taught down the middle arm. Yeah, and then I went to net went to um, yeah, Cottles Island. Cottles Island. But, be oh, but. but before you went to Cottles Island, after your first year in Middle Arm, what did you do in the summer? You finally went to what? Well, I went in yeah, St. John's and took a course. Wow, to, to become a teacher. <laughs> you took a teaching course in the summer. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Now, when you went to, was it Collins Island, you said? Did you have to go by boat? Uh, oh, from, uh, no, not when I, when I got to the place, no. The, the worst thing I had to do was walk up a big hill. But, but Middle Arm was by boat. Middle, yeah, but when I got to Middle Arm, I didn't have to. No, but to get to Middle Arm, you had to go well, on a boat. Yeah, well, so I had to get to Cottles Island, I had to go by boat. Yeah. Wow. From where I lived. Wow. Did you ever meet any other teachers when you first started, Audrey, or were you kind of by yourself? Yeah, I had, uh, yeah, I had uh, uh, down, down to Carlton's Island, there was two of us. There was a fella and me. He looked after the higher grades. Oh, and yeah. I looked after the other ones. That was in Middle Iron, but in Cottles Island, did you have a man or was it two, you and another woman? No, it wasn't a woman, it's a man. There was another man there too? Yeah. Oh. So you had no principal, Audrey. You were everything at the school. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, and you had to, I had to write out, write out every test by hand. Yeah. Whenever I tested the kids, I had to write it out by hand and give it to them. Wow. Wow. Did did you have a, a school in, did you have an inspector come and, and check up and oh, see how yes. you were doing? What was that like? Oh yeah. I slapped him down. <laughs> and that's what I did with him. And and why? Did, and what what kinds of things was he looking for when he would come to visit? I don't know. He was stuck in his nose or there was no place for him. And he I was, didn't, didn't put up with it. No, and so he he didn't come back. Oh, he didn't come back. He wasn't going to face me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, Audrey, were you in charge of cleaning the school too? No, not really. No. Who did that? 
tell you the truth, I don't know, but it's a close community. Maybe the kids, the older kids. It, 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 really, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was all right. It wasn't dirty or anything like that. It was, uh, the uh, hardest thing I had was kick blackboard. Yeah. And you had chalk in those days. Yes. And everything had to go on the blackboard. And you had to know how to do some beautiful handwriting. Yeah. Is your handwriting still pretty nice? I, I don't know. I, I don't write very much. <laughs> I can see yeah, Michelle. Oh, what have you got there, Michelle? If you hold it over a little to the other side. All right. Now. I got to figure out which side I got to go to and make it and back up. Back and back it up back a little up. bit. There you go, oh, right there. My. Tell me about that picture, Audrey. Let me see. You don't well, do you don't remember? Was that in Middle Arm your first year? Or was that then Cottles Island? You no, think? that's Cottles Island, I think. I think that's Cottles Island. Unless I got Merry Christmas there. So I remember doing that on the blackboard and Cottles Island. Look at the way she done her, her letters. And it says that you're supposed to drink two glasses of milk and all kinds of rules down the it, side. That's a great picture. Yeah, it's a, it says drink four, four glasses of milk every day. Coffee and tea are not good for children. I don't know, Miranda. I know that you drink coffee and tea. I'm I'm gonna ask Michelle some questions now. That's a great picture. Look at the inkwell there. Look at all the she, she yeah, exactly. And she had a few Down, books Mom. there anyway. Just lower it a little bit there, Michelle. Yep, I can see that. That's great. So Michelle, yeah. I wanna ask I wanna ask you some questions. Now I know you were you were a substitute teacher for a long time. And um, that was mostly what I did. And, and uh, graduating in 19, did you say 1990? Yes. So I wonder if you can, you can take us back to your, your days as a, as a teacher in a classroom. How did they mostly differ from what Audrey experienced? Well, my first, in 1990, when I graduated, I got a position down to uh, like mom, following footsteps, I was on an island. I was out to change islands, so I had to go on a boat. <laughs> wow! And and you lived on the change islands, Michelle, or you went there daily? No, I lived out there. I rented yeah. a house out there while I was out there, and uh -huh. the school I was in, A. R. Scammell Academy, it was just renamed A. R. Scammell when I got there. It had just been renamed, and. Uh, it was double classrooms. Wow. So it was two grades to a room. Okay. Down there. And was I it... was responsible my first year my first year out teaching, I was responsible for French from kindergarten, because they started in kindergarten to grade twelve. I did six and seven social studies. I did six and seven health. I did seven and eight language arts. I did seven and eight home economics. My, my, that's a full plate. That was a very full plate for someone just coming out of university with a teaching degree and having to start a career. <laughs> it was very sad. overwhelming. Your day would start very early and end quite late. Yeah, exactly. I had a lot of things to get done. How many kids would have been in the That's school, Michelle? In the school? I don't know. I had roughly, I'd say, 20 odd kids, 20 to 30 kids in each classroom, I'd say. Wow. And Audrey, how many kids total were in the school that you remember? I, I don't know. I can't answer the guess, to tell you the truth. Would, it, would there have been 100? No, 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 no. No, not that many. Much smaller. Maybe 60, maybe 60 or 70, 60 or there, say, around there. Wow. No, they, they weren't. 
there wasn't a lot of them, but there was bigger, bigger kids, some bigger kids. They were all together, the big ones yeah. and the small ones. Yeah. And did you ever meet the parents of any of the kids, Audrey? Oh, yes. Oh. See them every day. Oh, did you? How come? Did they bring the kids? Uh, they, hey? did the, no, the kids had come, to, come on their own. No, no, you just do, do only, you know, you just, we intermingle. Yep. But you never, you, you know, did you, did you ever meet the parents of the children you taught? Well, well I dare say I did, yeah, lots of them, because I'm probably in their homes. <laughs> and you boarded with one, and you boarded with a family that had kids that went to your school. Yeah, I did. Wow, they'd have to be on their best behavior. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Miranda, I want to jump over to you now and um, and ask you a couple questions about things that are in, in your world. What's surprising you most, Miranda, about teaching and what you're learning at Memorial? Uh, it's very, the schools now are very different even from when I was in elementary school. There's a oh, lot so. more technology in the mm -hmm. classrooms now. Mm -hmm. And that's a learning curve in itself for me. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. every classroom now, grandma said they had a blackboard. Um, for me going through school, it was the blackboards and whiteboards, whiteboard markers. But now it's every classroom pretty much has a smart board. Mm -hmm. And I can distinctly remember that my school, I was in grade six when my school got the first smart board. Wow. So it's a big change for me because the kindergartners now know how to work the computer and the smart board. And it wasn't introduced to me until grade six. Yeah. Yeah. And Michelle, your days as a teacher uh, technology would have been just trickling in, was it? Yeah, because when I was in Change Islands, there, I guess they may have had a computer class. I doubt it. I don't remember it. I mean, all I had was the Blackboard. Mm -hmm. I never used anything else. It wasn't until my later years, of course, substituting everywhere that all the technology started coming in, but I was and still am old school. So I could never operate the smart board. I didn't know how to get that thing. And that's like doing attendance it was supposed to be all done on computer, but I never knew how to get into it to do the attendance. So I would just write it all on a piece of paper and leave it on the desk. Yeah. Yeah. For them to input. Audrey, did you, did you have to take attendance at your school? Yeah. I yes, I used to have to, uh, you know, when they they came, I used. I think I remember um, writing down that they were there. And, uh, and and if the kids were away, did they have to bring a note from their parent to say where they were? No. You 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 know. They're so small enough that you know you know you know. Yeah, and they did, and most, and most of the kids wanted to be there. They liked school. Oh yes, oh yeah. I didn't have any problems getting them, get them, getting them come school. What do you? I had one girl. Yeah. Sorry. No, go I ahead. Had one girl. She. She was deaf and dumb. Wow. And the Swindians inspector came around we had a school inspector he used to come around you know every now and again and he he uh, said to me he said what have you got her here for i said you mind your own business she's staying there wow that's all i got him. i shut him up right quick because you told him what did you used to give her hey what did you used to give her i used to when she come into school every single morning she never missed a day Huh. And I'd give her a, a piece of paper and I would give her a pencil and crayon. And she huh. le left her to her own devices. And she was as happy as, and you know what? That girl got a, a 
real good job in St. John's. I, I, when I heard about it, I nearly danced. Ah, uh, isn't that beautiful when you have a, when you hear about a student who has been successful like that, Audrey, what do you think, what do you yeah. think, what do you, why do you think she loved school with you? I, I don't know. I just, I just like the kids. I like them. I didn't have a, anybody that was unruly because I, I, if it, if I seen that they were being unruly, I'd slap them down right, right there. And, and those were the days, those were the days of being able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, um, is there a, is there a, a child that you remember who was away because of smallpox or measles or anything? Was there any of that kind of outbreak, Audrey, when you were there? No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody missed school. Wow. And you wouldn't be able to miss school. There was nobody to substitute for you. No, no. But when I was down, I had another uh, school down to uh, Middle Arm. Right. And there was another, another fellow there. He was higher grade. I had the lower ones. But if you, but it, you never could not come in to teach on your days. Like you weren't sick and didn't go to school because you were sick. Oh. No, I never missed today. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, Michelle, I want to ask you if you were ever um, given a gift by a student that you remember. Was there ever a, a student who gave you, it might have been a letter or a picture or anything at all that at Christmas time or anything like that? Well, like usual, when you're in anywhere, even as a substitute, I mean, especially the littler ones, I mean, they'd always be making you little drawings or writing you little notes. I mean, I kept a lot of those things. I don't know. Well, they're all packed away now where I just moved to Newfoundland last year. So nothing has been discovered since we've moved. But yeah, at, Christ at Christmas, when I was down to Change Islands, I know I had a Christmas ornament given to me by one of the grade six girls and I still put it on Christmas tree. Uh, it's a little plate, it's a little plate on a thing, Merry Christmas. And she had her name on the back and I think you could still pick out her name on the back, but I mean, I still hang it on the Christmas tree to this day. Uh, oh, that's lovely. Now, Audrey, what was Christmas? What was Christmas like in the little one room school where you were? I don't know. I can't remember. Did you put up a tree? I don't know. I don't think. Were you? Were you, well, you obviously wrote, <laughs> you wrote Merry yeah. Christmas on the chalkboard anyway. <laughs> yeah, and I did that. And Audrey, were you responsible for teaching art and music and all that? No, no, no. Not music. Not much art. All I had was the... the just a, what is it, reading, write, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And, and, it was about sides of it. And did the kids ever sing? No. Did you, did you say, yeah. go ahead. Should we, no, we, uh, I know I used to, most of everything I had to uh, write on the blackboard, everything. Yeah. I had to go on the blackboard, they had to read it. Did the kids and, say the uh, Lord, did the kids say the Lord's Prayer in the morning? Oh, no, I, I don't know, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. We yeah. prob probably did. Yeah. We probably did. And and lunchtime, the the kids all went home. Yeah, they all went home. And then they'd have to and come back. <laughs> they they and they, they came back. Come back in. They came back oh, after yeah. lunch. They all came back. Yeah. And down to Cottles Island, where I was, we had to walk up a hill. And when yeah. did the when did the too. when did the school day end? Oh, I, I don't know, around four o'clock, I suppose. Right. Around, 
Yeah. And then what was your evening like? Did you have to plan all the lessons before you left the school? Yeah, well, I don't know. I had so much to do. I used to have write, I wrote a lot of stuff on the blackboard. The blackboard was my thing. Yeah. I used, I used to write a lot of stuff on there. It'd be a lot of work. And I had one, yeah, I had one girl came to school and she was deaf and she was dumb. Right. But yeah. the school inspector came around and he told me, he said, what do you got her here for? And I said to him, I said, you leave her alone and don't touch her. Yeah. She's staying. And you know, she got a job in St. John's now and a good one. I just about danced when I heard it. Yeah. And you I, helped her. You helped her. And you helped her feel yes, like, like she, she belonged there. Yeah. Michelle, is there a student, is there a student that stands out for you, Michelle, in all your, your subbing and your teaching? Oh, well, going back to mom's thing, I guess, I guess you could say mom was the beginning of inclusion in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Seeing, right. I mean, back then I'm sure, right. Like, I mean, I'm sure the parents probably wanted a break. So, I mean, she, they would send her to school. I mean, and of course the mom was there and allowed her to stay, even though they didn't want her to have room there. So, yeah which was a bonus. I mean, nowadays, you know, all the kids now are included in the classroom. Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. I was in some schools where there were still the rooms where kids with disabilities or learning issues or whatever were in a separate room and they weren't in mm -hmm. the regular classroom with everybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. But for me, for students wise, yeah, I've had a lot of students over the years. Uh, uh, nobody in particular stands out other than, well, I guess you could say when I was out, I had, I did one year in Change Islands, and then I left. And then in 93, I had a half year term in Robert's Arm, which is alongside of my hometown. And I did French and a couple of subjects there, but it was only a half time. And then I lost my job by being bumped so that's when we moved to BC so then when I was out to BC subbing I was in the high school stream because my certificate was a high school so I was never allowed I wasn't even considered for elementary or primary jobs because I was only on the list for high school so mm -hmm. I was in all the high schools that are around Kamloops area and anyone knowing anything about hockey Kamloops had a good hockey team in the Blazers and yeah. so in one particular school I was in there were hockey players of course so when they were in school because a lot of times they weren't in school because they were off doing games or whatever but I did have two hockey players that went to the NHL wow so Darcy Tucker and Jerome Eginla were two students that were in high school when I was in Kamloops subbing and both of those made it to the NHL teams. I don't remember what teams they were on. They were each on a different one, but that's my claim to fame. Ah, uh, that's lovely. That's a lovely story. Miranda, over to you. Is there a, a student, and I know you're, you're soon to graduate, and in all your placements and, and the, uh, the classrooms you've been in, Miranda, is there a student who stands out to you that still lives in your heart somewhere? Um, there is. Now, they weren't from any of my placements that I've done through the university. They were from a summer job for me. Yeah. Um, at the therapeutic riding barn I worked at in Nova Scotia, Hinchinbrook Farms. Yeah, talk about um, that. It's uh, kids and adults with varying physical and mental disabilities, and there's a lot of work done there with kids on the autism spectrum and having them riding and working with the horses. Mm -hmm. And there was one little boy that when I started volunteering there for my first summer, he didn't talk. Um, I'm not sure if it's because he couldn't or he just didn't talk very much. Mm 
Um, by the end of the summer, coming to the activities and riding with the horses, he was a complete chatterbox at th four years old, I think he was, wow. um, running around the barn in his little cowboy boots. Wow. Wow. And he so found that. His yeah. That really, that stands out for me. All my experiences there at the farm were incredible for me. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Audrey, if you had to name three qualities for a teacher, what, what three qualities are important for a teacher to have? Well, the main one is patience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else? Well, I suppose you've got to sort of figure out how to deal with them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Not, 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 not be a, a cop to them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just, I, I don't know. To me, it came, I think the, the, the kid and me, we, you know, I got to know and we got together and we, there's only one, one young fella I had to slap down. We had the school painted. Oh. I, uh, they painted the school outside. Now that was all. And I went back from lunch one day, and he was after making mud pies and put them on the paint. Oh, dear. Slapped them on the paint. Yes, I slapped him, too. And what color was the paint? Oh, it was white. Oh, was the whole school white on the outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How how important was a sense of humor for teaching? Do you think, Audrey? Do you they, think you had? Do you think you had to have fun to be a teacher too? Yeah. I didn't have very much fun. You didn't. <laughs> I just said. No, indeed, I didn't. And I, I was down the middle arm, too. It was another place. How I many, how many years, fun. how many years all together were you a teacher? I can't remember. You started <laughs> what year? One year. Oh, I was down, I went down to middle arm in 1953. Wow. When you were when, when you're 17. I was 17 years old. So how many years have you been a teacher? A long time. And then I, uh, then I went down to, when I uh, left Middle Arm. I'll never forget the day I left Middle Arm. I never liked that place. No? No. And it, but it, there was two teachers in Middle Arm, a man and me. Yeah. And what, what didn't you like about it? Were you lonely there? No, nah, it was just, I don't know. I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. What did you do? What did you do for and, groceries there, Audrey? Was there a grocery store or did you have to bring your things with you? Well, there was a store. There was a store there. And you read, like, like I boarded with people. And so did the other, the man too. So they, was, they provided you... I, they provided you with meals and things. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and on your last day in Middle Arm, what happened? <laughs> yeah. The, the, see, uh, Middle Arm is, was off and the, the, ste uh, the boat used to come in every yeah. so often, you know. And uh, this time, the... Uh, and there's a boy, the man was with, even a man teacher and me. Yeah. And the boat, to, boat came in. And I said, that's it, I'm leaving. <laughs> now we had to fix up the, fix up the, I don't know, the books for the government, I suppose, or for somebody. Yeah. Anyway, I said to the, the man there, I said, I'm gone. You can fix the books. 
And you were, you left. I left and I was in such a hurry. I, I, I put my keys, locked my keys in my trunk. <laughs> I was in such a hurry to get out of it. I went, and when I got home, dad had to pry the lock. <laughs> so you had to have a, a sense of humor. Miranda, what do you think, what do you think the three most important qualities of a teacher are? Uh, I definitely agree with grandma that uh, patience is the number one thing. Yep. Um, yeah. But I just being caring about the students and I think if you're a teacher and you really love what you're doing, your students in your classroom become like your own kids. Ah, that's beautiful. And Michelle, what, what, what qualities would you give to the best teachers? To the best teachers? Well, willingness to learn. Mm -hmm. Because you're definitely learning every day whether it's from something about the kids or the new technology and everything that's coming in. So you have to be, have a willingness to learn at all times. And well, and like you say, getting to know the kids on their level, their interests, what they like to do so that you can interact with them. Yeah. I mean, especially some that, I mean, if, considered problems or whatever i mean there's always a reason behind it i mean i never had a lot of opportunity to do any of that because where i was subbing for most of the time i was never with the same kids for any extended period of time so i mean i never really got to know any of the backgrounds of the kids like you would if you were actually their teacher and was able to look into all that kind of thing mm -hmm. but i mean i was in I was in everything. I was in learning centers. I was in French. I was in high school. I had a blind student in when I was in Kamloops. So I had to do up work in Braille, which I had never done before in my life. Wow. So the machine was there that I had to do up the sheets in wow. Braille for this student that was coming in. I mean, I didn't know anything about Braille. Wow. And, and being open to so learning. I was well, exactly. I mean, I, I was thrust into a lot of different situations when you're a substitute. You never know what you're walking into. Yeah. And you've got such a beautiful smile, Michelle, and I can see the twinkle in your eye even now, you know. Audrey, I'm, yeah. I'm going to give the last word to the youngster here with us. Audrey, I, I wonder if you could offer some advice to, to new teachers who are just starting out what advice would you give to Miranda? Well, first thing, you've got to have a lot of patience. Yeah. A lot of patience. And you've got to, I don't know, you've got to try and make friends with a whole lot of them. Yeah. Now, there's some... We, I had uh, twice. I had two room school. I didn't. And there was another fella in one part, and I was in the other. Yeah. So that wasn't too bad. And, and you got along. And, you know. You, yeah, you got to got to, to get the, I don't know, to try and fit in with the kids. Yeah, I I like I, what I, you. I must say. I, I never had any rowdy kids. I never had no problem with the youngsters, I must say. I had a, like I said, I had a deaf and a dumb kid there. And uh, the uh, inspector came around and asked, told me, wanted me to get rid of her. And I told him, I said, you keep your hands off her. She's saying. And she did say, and now she's in St. John's. But a beautiful job. And you did a dance. You were so happy for her. Yes, so I good. Did. And and I when think I found it. And you know what, Audrey? I think I think that's the that's the parting comment for tonight. That you got to be you got to be ready to dance with joy as a teacher. <laughs> so I think that's just a, a wonderful way to end tonight. I can't thank you enough for all that you've uh, you've done here tonight. I I want to say special thanks to Morris Berry and Craig Adams and Angela Hunt at Memorial University who 
help with the razzle dazzle uh, technology on Facebook. Um, our next Tuesday Tales with Teachers is on Tuesday, January the 25th at 8 p.m. You never know who you're going to meet on a Tuesday night as part of this 100th anniversary celebration. I want to thank you, Audrey and Michelle and Miranda, for being part of a wonderful, memorable evening. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be thinking about that kid who put mud pies on the outside of that school, Audrey, for a whole week. <laughs> Thanks for the smiles, everybody, and we'll see you in January. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>